What a treat to be here today with you, Dad. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here, Laura, at the uh, University of Minnesota Law School. Congratulations on uh, receiving the Scales of Justice Award. Thanks, Dad. Your entire family is very proud of you, uh, not just because of the award, but because of the values and commitments on which it's based. Why don't you talk just a little bit about your commitment to uh, access to justice and where do you think that value came from? Dad, you provided such a tremendous role model to my sisters and me for how we should strive for equal justice for all. You and Mom encouraged us and expected us to play a role in our communities. And so, you know, growing up, you were so involved in these values and living these values that being so much uh, in awe of my dad and all that he's done, I wanted to be like my dad. Laura, I know another of your very strongly held values is uh, commitment to the rule of law. Sure, and once again, uh, the role model for me uh, is a giant in the rule of law area who I'm sitting across from, my father. One of the basic tenets of the rule of law is that every person is entitled to equal rights and fairness. You can't have the rule of law unless you have an inclusive society where people have those rights, but they can exercise those rights because it's an inclusive place. We have responsibilities as lawyers. There are an enormous number of unmet legal needs in this country. What uh, can lawyers do to fulfill their responsibility as lawyers? We all have an obligation to create a more free and just society. And so what we can do together is provide pro bono services, fight for equal justice, partner with others to fund or support people doing this work, encouraging the firms that we work with to reflect our values and do more pro bono. I served for many, many years on the ABA Commission on Domestic Violence. I chaired it for several years. And some of my favorite people in the world were people out there fighting every day for equal justice and for stopping violence and for making a difference. And so again, uh, through the years, I've got to see that when you can be stretched out of your comfort zone, but when you've got a support network, you can do pro bono that makes a difference, even if it's not the area in which you were trained. How about in the corporate context? Can corporate counsel make this kind of commitment and how can they do that? Corporate counsel can and must make this commitment. I think corporate lawyers can partner with firms to do more, encourage our firms to reflect our values and do more, and we'll have a much more engaged and purpose-led team when we encourage everyone to try to make a difference and impact in people's lives. This summer at Clorox, we decided to hire five times more summer law student interns than we had planned because so many law students lost their internships in the face of this pandemic and we wanted to help. And it was such a great experience for our legal team. The additional interns just inspired us and they made everyone filled with hope for the future because they were so amazing. Laura, with the uh, pandemic having and disproportionate adverse impact on uh, persons of color. What are some of the specific things lawyers can do to provide uh, assistance? It's tragic, the impact that this pandemic and the ensuing economic recession is having on people who are already underserved. In addition to doing more pro bono, we can support public interest lawyers and others to ensure that there's resources to increase access to justice. I know how inspired you are by the Equal Justice Works Fellows. You've gone out of your way to mention them to me uh, mm -hmm. through the years of how impressive they are. Why do you think it's important for lawyers and everyone uh, who's able to support the organization and the projects of the organization? I believe that Equal Justice Works through our amazing fellows makes a difference in bringing about equal access to justice 
it enables the next generation of lawyers fighting hard for equal rights, fairness, justice, access to justice. And I personally am so inspired every time I talk with a fellow about their incredible projects and the difference they're making. One takeaway, I hope that everybody watching this virtual event tonight takes, is that it starts with people. It starts with each of us. And if we can just encourage five more people, 10 more people to do more justice work, to provide equal justice, to serve the underserved, that's how real change can happen. Hi everyone. I want to take a moment to say thank you. This is an incredible honor and it was such a treat to be able to sit down and talk with my dad about our shared values and hope for our justice system. Thank you to everyone at Equal Justice Works and thank you to all of you for supporting this organization and all of the amazing Equal Justice Works fellows. When I first was introduced to Equal Justice Works, I fell in love. I am energized by its commitment to mobilizing passionate public service leaders working across the country. You Equal Justice Works fellows are so inspiring. And right now, I think we could all use a bit of inspiration. This has been an incredibly tough year. Clorox, as a company, is committed to making a positive difference and we know our company and products have played an important role in supporting public health in the face of the global pandemic. We also know that we must act to address racism, which has been a public health crisis for centuries. Clorox stands in solidarity with the black community and other communities of color, and we are committed to being a part of the solution, which means taking action. That is why this year, I am so proud that Clorox has chosen to sponsor three Equal Justice Works Fellows. Elizabeth Rainwater, who is addressing the discriminatory impact of Georgia's probation system with her host organization, the Georgia Justice Project. Bailey Strello, who is helping to ensure equal housing and employment opportunities for California residents with criminal records through her host organization, Root and Rebound. And Martina Tiku, who is hosted by the NAACP and advocates on behalf of tenants to improve housing stability in Atlanta. I know the power of an Equal Justice Works Fellow. Fellows challenge systems of injustice, make meaningful and lasting change in their community, and help us realize our nation's promise of equal justice for all. For 30 years, this wonderful organization has mobilized new public interest lawyers to fight for equal justice across our country. I am so grateful for and inspired by the work of these fellows, now more than ever. Thank you for this honor this evening. Thank you for your support of this organization I love. And thank you to the fellows.